hey, welcome to Rad Lab. So with winter kind of starting up, my kids are stuck inside more often and they're starting to go crazy. So one thing that I used to do when I was younger in college, I used to do rock climbing and bouldering a little bit. Um, so I thought that'd be kind of a cool project is to build like some bouldering wall panels for the wall. And that way my kids could burn up some of their energy. So I think that's gonna be the next project. So let's, uh, let's just get started. So I started off the project in good old Fusion 360 and cranked out a quick climbing panel design. They originally started off two feet by four feet, but I soon realized that that wouldn't fit in my CNC router. And I kind of wanted to do it all on my CNC router because I just really love CNC routering stuff. So I opted to make the panels two feet by two feet. Plus, if they're two feet by two feet, I could put a little gap between them and make the effective climbing area just a little bit higher. So that was another plus to kind of making them the smaller two foot by two foot panel. I knew I'd be mounting these to drywall, so I kind of made a wide counterboard hole. So that way the T-nut would be able to sit below flush on the back side of the climbing panel. After the panel was designed, I opened it up in the manufacturing workspace in Fusion 360 and just pumped out some CNC tool paths. After the climbing panel was done, I started working on the climbing holds. So obviously you can totally buy climbing holds, but I don't know if you've seen how expensive they are. And there's no way I was gonna spend that much cheese on some climbing holds, so I just decided to make them out of two by fours. So all these holds are sized so that you can make them out of two by fours. So basically you can make all the holds for this entire project with like 20 bucks of wood. Also, I like the look of the wood. It actually looks way better on our wall than I ever expected. It actually looks really nice. So that's another reason I think I like the wood is just, it just looks a lot nicer than having just, than having a huge patchwork of colors and stuff on the wall. The other thing I might do is I've been toying around with the idea of designing some volumes to also put on there. I think that'd be really fun for the kids and kind of mix up the climbing experience a little bit. Fusion 360 has a form workspace. So basically you can set up a little chunk of this like Play-Doh and using the nodes, vertices, and faces, you can kind of morph and shape and sculpt it into whatever shape you want. On some of the holes, I added a plane of symmetry so that the holds would come out nice and even. And honestly, this is probably one of the most fun parts of the project, just making kind of like some cool organic shapes. And I think they came out pretty cool. After I was done molding the basic shape, I cut a flat in the back that would sit against the climbing wall. And then I also made a straight through hole and a counter bore to accept a 3816 bolt, which is the standard for climbing walls, and a 38 washer. After the CAD and CAM were done, it was time to hop on over to Home Depot and get some material. I opted for some three quarter inch thick sanded plywood, which I think is a pretty standard thickness for climbing walls. After getting the plywood, I loaded up a couple two by fours for the holds and then headed on out. So we got all the materials, so I headed back to my garage and we got to work. So I started with the panels first and used a skill saw to cut the panels to size and clip the corners. After the panels were cut to size, I used a router to kind of round over the outside edges all the way around the panels. After that, the panels were ready to have all the holes CNC routed into them. So I put it in my Shapoko and sent it. I've been working with CNC machines for years and they are some of my favorite things ever. I just love CNC machines. I just love how fast and perfect they make everything. I tested one of the T-nuts and it was a really good fit. So I just ran the rest of them. Some of the climbing wall panels had some voids and chips in them. So before the next step, I just kind of put some wood filler and filled up all the voids. After that, it was time to install all the T-nuts. It was 150 T-nuts for six panels. But surprisingly, it didn't take that long to put them all in. I just turned a little simple punch at work and then used that to help set the T-nuts below flush. After that, I gave them a light sand and a coat of polyurethane and the climbing wall panels were done. So now that the panels were done, it was time to move on to the holds. From the CAD models, I knew all the different lengths I needed to cut. So I just marked out a bunch and then just cut them with a skill saw. Each hold was done in two operations. So the first operation cut the anchor hole for the 3816 bolt. And I did that because in the second operation, I was gonna use that anchor hole to hold the hold while I machined the complete outside of the hold. Because that was one of the problems is how do you hold something when you need complete access 360 degrees around the part all the way to the deck. 
And so that was kind of the way I decided to do it, was just to use the anchor hole in two ops. And the CNC router was set to 150 inches per minute at 23,000 RPM with about a 50 to 75 thousandths radial depth of cut. Axial depth of cut was 375 thousandths or 3 eighths. And then the different holds actually have the holes and counterbores in different positions on the hold. So I just adjusted it when I was running each type of hold. After the holds were cut and they had the counterbore and holes machined into them, it was time to make a fixture to hold all the holds. So I took a three quarter inch piece of plywood, the same plywood that the panels are made out of, and I just made a super simple fixture. I basically just counterboard the back and then put a T-nut in it. And so a normal anchor bolt goes through the hold blank and then holds itself to the fixture plate. And don't worry, I tightened everything to spec with a torque wrench. I think I definitely left some performance on the table, but I only had one end mill and I'm not running these productions, so I didn't really decide to push it. But I could probably bump the material removal rate up by maybe 25 to 50% maybe. Again, I was just throwing 150 inches per minute at it, 23,000 RPM, and the 3D surfacing had a 25,000 step over. So that's kind of how fine the finish is, is that the end mill was going over 25,000 every time it went around. And originally I was gonna sand these completely smooth, but when they came out, I actually really liked the scallops, those little uh, ridges that the ball end mill put into the hold. They actually felt really nice. So I just ended up lightly sanding them and not completely removing them because they actually had a really nice grip to them. So I kept, I kept the texture. And actually I might even go a little bit coarser next time and just to kind of give it a little bit more aggressive grip. So I really liked it. And it also kind of looks cool. I love the even symmetrical lines on everything. I just love machine parts. So that's another reason I kept it. I just think it looks good. And for the part, it actually works really well uh, functionally. It just makes it a lot more grippy. The different types of holds that I made were kind of a mini jug, a pocket, a pinch, and then a, kind of like a mini sloper. So I just put this in the corner of our living room and I just spaced it out with a two by six and actually ended up being a really good spacing. And then we set the kids loose on it and they absolutely love it. They really like that corner because they can kind of press themselves into that corner. It's a little easier to climb. So putting it in a corner was a good choice. And again, I love the aesthetics of the wood. In my ghetto mind, it almost passes as decoration, right? So it's kind of like a functional decoration. I don't know if normal people would call it a decoration, but I really like the way that it looks. So works well for us. Cool, and that's pretty much about it. Thanks for watching the video this far. And if you're interested in any of the holds or panels that I use in this video, they're available on my website for purchase. And anything that you guys purchase on there just helps support the channel. So a huge thank you if you head over there and check it out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. And uh, we'll check you guys later. See ya.